Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of our WCW What If series. The Monday Night Wars continuing on. It is the week three in October 1996 and we have a heck of a show here tonight uh, including the um, the big main event featuring Bam Bam Bigelow and Vader, the number one contender for the WCW World Heavyweight Championship taking on Said World Heavyweight Champion Randy Savage and a partner of his choosing. We also have found out that Lex Luger and the Giant will both be in action tonight. So we're going to have to see how that things play out with them as they have had issues with people respectively recently. We're going to have to uh, find out, but let's dive into the action in front of 20,428 people in the Rupp Arena. We have a 99 rated segment as the horsemen are out on the town celebrating to open up Nitro. Uh, They're out celebrating with their newest members, Mariko Yoshida and Marcus Bagwell. Pillman doesn't seem to be enjoying himself though and Ric Flair kind of notices it, pulling him aside. Flair says that he knows how Pillman feels right now, upset about the United States Championship taken from him like that. It was lost in a multi-man matchup and then the rematch was cost... Uh, was he lost over at the hands of others because, of course, Diamond Dallas Page came in and, and hit the Diamond Cutter to cause the victory. However, Flair knows that the U.S. title was holding Pillman back. Pillman is destined for bigger things, bigger than the U.S. title. Pillman kind of seems to nod along <clears throat> a little bit before Flair claps him on the shoulder and brings him back towards the limo that the horsemen are riding in. So we got uh, Pillman who's feeling a little down about lose about the US title situation, but Flair says that he has he sees bigger things in mind for Pillman. We're gonna have to see how that plays out. Ninety nine rating for the segment, good stuff there. Ric Flair invented a new catchphrase. Um I'm not sure what catchphrase he invented here in nineteen ninety six, but he invented a new catchphrase. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, ninety nine rating, really great stuff there as the horsemen are out on the town celebrating. The fact that they are basically now officially the Four Horsemen. After that, we have a backstage segment where Megumi Kudo is seen walking backstage when she's confronted by Chris Jericho, the television champion. Jericho says she may be the voice of Mr. Personality, but everyone knows that she'd rather be with a real winner like Chris Jericho. Old Stinko Malenko is just some loser who couldn't act his way out of a paper bag, but Chris Jericho has it all and then some. Kudo says that Malenko is more of a man than Jericho will ever be. Jericho laughs this off, saying she must be brainwashed or something because he knows Malenko, and I couldn't be farther from the truth. Kudo says that he knows that Jericho knows nothing, but he should know one thing, that Halloween Havoc, there will be a new WCW television champion. Kudo walks off, leaving Jericho standing there with a smirk on his face, so clearly Jericho has something in mind. But we'll have to see what that is in the future. 64 rating for the segment, pretty good stuff there. We then go to the ring for our first matchup, which gets a 70 as the Giant defeats Kendall Wyndham in 601 by pinfall the big boot. Uh, 84 from the Giant, 49 from Kendall Wyndham. Lack of selling, lack of psychology. I figured as much. Um, even in a six minute matchup, I figured as much. Um, it kind of sucks because the Giant is a good in ring performer, but he just does not have the the uh, in ring like person. Uh, psychology and stuff so I, I would have to constantly keep putting him in matches with other people with psychology which a lot of times I have you know with other people so I'm gonna have to keep figuring stuff out with him but nevertheless Giant gets a bit of a squash of victory here in six minutes however during the matchup uh, Meng came out and was standing on the stage watching the action afterwards Meng is still there as the Giant stares him down before James Mitchell gets a mic, clearly still kind of banged up from last week. Uh, Mitchell says that Giant will pay for his sins at Halloween Havoc, whether he wants to or not. So, potentially a match between the two at Halloween Havoc? We're not sure, but apparently Giant is going to pay for his sins at the pay-per-view. We'll have to see what that means. 83 rating for this segment. Good stuff there. After that, we have a promo with the Outlaws. Backstage, they're getting interviewed by Gene Okerlund, but the interview is quickly interrupted by Harlem Heat. 
Booker says that he's watched them perform for a little while now, and he looks forward to the challenge that they bring. That being said, Harlem Heat will remain the WCW World Tag Team Champions. Wesson says that they have respect for the champions, but they shouldn't be surprised when the Outlaws pull off the upset of the year uh, in 13 days at the pay-per-view. A little bit of back and forth between these two teams leads to a matchup being booked for up next. It will be William Wesson taking on Stevie Ray one-on-one with both members, both partners at ringside for the matchup. This guy is 68, which isn't too bad. The match itself gets 65. Also not too bad. As in a decent matchup and a surprise, William Wesson defeats Stevie Ray in 853 by pinfall to roll up. So, you know, he said uh, that they should be prepared for potential upset victory. And they just kind of showed what could potentially happen at the pay-per-view here with an upset victory over Stevie Ray. As a bit of a roll up gets the victory for William Wesson, who had a 55. Stevie Ray had a 70. 65 rating for the match itself. Not strong, but it is what it is. Um, but the Outlaws have some momentum heading into the pay-per-view. Of course, we'll have to see what happens next week on Nitro. After that, our weekly New World Order video begins playing with Paul Levesque and Ted DiBiase standing there. Levesque and DiBiase start mocking Cactus Jack, but before they can get much into things, Steve Austin suddenly attacks Levesque. During the middle of the video, he att- you know, the black and white, video and everything like that over all of a sudden Steve Austin attacks Levesque Austin throws DiBiase into the wall that's kind of behind them um, every time before going back to stomping away on Paul Levesque Austin then grabs a bean down Levesque and shows his face towards the camera he shouts out that this right here this is what it's like to have to deal with a pissed off Steve Austin he says that Bret Hart will pay at Halloween Havoc whether he likes it or not he then throws Levesque into the same wall he just launched DiBiase into before walking out of view so Steve Austin taking it to a member of the of the NWO uh, before his matchup with Bret Hart in 13 days at Halloween Havoc. We're going to have to see what implications this has heading forward, but Steve Austin try, getting one up on the NWO here. Seems like 88 rating for the segment. Good stuff there. After that, we see why two members of the NWO were not there to help break up the fight, as in a decent matchup, the New World Order's team of Jerry Lynn and Sean Waltman defeat the Rock and Roll Express in 923 when Jerry Lynn submitted Robert Gibson with a cross arm breaker submission. Um, ignore the, the <laughs> Sean Waltman and Teddy Biasi are good pairings a bit because <laughs> technically uh, Teddy Biasi is not there at ringside with them because he is currently beat up somewhere. I mean the video is not like a live video but he's still you know, he's not there because he's selling the, the fact that he's that he got attacked. Nevertheless, New World Order picking up a victory over the Rock and Roll Express, who were a tag team in the uh, Triple Threat number one contenders matchup last week. Um, they do, you know, it is stated that any member of the New World Order can challenge for any championship they want between now and the end of the year. So, you know, I maybe... Uh, Maybe Jerry Lynn and Sean Waltman will challenge the tag team champions. We'll have to see. We will have to see for sure. But uh, 73 rating for the match is pretty good. And look at that, too. I, Again, I continue to say this, and I'm sure some of you out there are continuing to get sick of me saying it. But look at that in-ring performance for Jerry Lynn. If you look back to when he was Mr. JL, he was doing like 35 to 40 in-ring performances. And now we've got him up to a 66 in-ring performance in a matchup. And and it's not like him and Waltman have excellent chemistry with each other. So he's getting that naturally, which is fantastic at this point. 68 from Waltman, 65 from Gibson, 59 from Ricky Morton. Morton and Waltman seemed off their game. So, I mean, Waltman, I kind of expected a 70-something for. So him being off his game kind of makes sense. But, yeah, really good showing here is... uh, the New World Order get a victory, even though, you know, obviously WCW, we don't want the New World Order to get a victory, but they do get a victory, nonetheless. After that, we have a 100-rated segment, which I kind of, uh, when I was booking the show, I kind of came up with on the fly and thought, well, that'd be kind of interesting to have this happen. As Diamond Dallas Page is walking down a hallway, when he ends up face-to-face with Eddie Guerrero, of course, longtime viewers of the series know the history 
between Diamond Dallas Page and Eddie Guerrero, their battles over the United States Championship and everything that happened there. There's a bit of an awkward look based off of that. Page puts his hands up kind of in a, kind of in a surrender-ish kind of thing. You know, like, oh, hold on, hold on. He says that last time he knows that they interacted, Page wasn't exactly friendly towards him. However, that was a different him, one that's seen different days and different ways since then. Guerrero then says that he's seen different days and different ways as well. But before Paige can say anything else, Guerrero just walks off. So um, Paige watches him leave with a bit of concerned look on his face. So you know, it's it was kind of an inter- it's kind of an interesting thing because we're seeing these two on two different paths um, than they were the last time that they interacted with each other. Of course, last time we saw them, Paige was the chicken shit heel who was trying to cheat and do everything underhandedly to win. While well, Eddie Guerrero was, you know, the the uh, baby face that everyone loved that uh, that everybody was getting along with over, and now we kind of have this this I don't want to say complete churn because Eddie Guerrero is still a face. He's just a little bit more of an aggressive and and serious face. While Diamond Dallas Page, of course, is a is a, you know getting the big pops and everything like that right now because he went up against the horseman and or he's going up against the horseman that is, and so it's kind of a Kind of interesting to see these two interacting after months of dealing with each other. Kind of see these two interacting, you know, completely different paths at this point. But 100 rating segment, really good stuff there as well. After that, Randy Savage is interviewed about his matchup tonight. He says that Bam Bam Bigelow and Vader are definitely a destructive duo, but the madness is strong is enough to stop the destruction. And just in case... Savage happened to find someone who's willing to step into someone else's fight, especially with a potential shot at a prize on, you know, being on the line. Of course, that obviously kind of gives a little bit of a hint, but it becomes for sure when Steven Regal walks into view with a serious look on his face. He nods towards Savage before turning back towards the camera. Regal says that he's defeated Vader before, you know, he just defeated him at Fall Brawl, and he can defeat Bigelow. He may have future issues with other people in his company, just like he will have future issues with Savage at some point in his company. However, for now, he focuses the fight on Bigelow and Vader. The two men then walk off together as the show goes back to ringside. In a 100-rated segment, we finally have hit the point where Gene Okerlund performed poorly. (laughs) So many other times in promos, Okerlund doesn't really help at all, or if it's like a really low one, he helps boost it up. We have finally hit the point where Gene Okerlund is actually the weaker performer in in this segment, so that's good stuff. Nevertheless, 100 rating, as Randy Savage has revealed that it will be Steven Regal teaming up with him tonight. Um, and it does kind of make sense, honestly, because Steven Regal is his prize fighter now. He wants he wants championships. He wants the, the you know, he wants to fight for prizes. And what better way to fight for a prize than to team up with the world's heavyweight champion? Because then, in, in a way, the world's heavyweight champion then owes you a favor. And uh, you can you turn that into a, getting a future title shot. So, these two men... Potentially future opponents, but for now, they are a partners heading into tonight's main event. After that, we go to the ring. Lex Luger has a nine-minute victory over Rocky Maivia by submission with a torture rack. 65 rating for the match. Sure, why not? I think it probably got brought down a little bit because of the lack of a storyline, because it didn't advance the Luger Sting storyline in it, but whatever. We'll take it. 71 from Luger. 38 from Rocky Maivia. However, and you can all say it with me as you're watching this, it's not what happens during the match, but after the match. As after the match, St- or Lex Luger is celebrating the win until a crow is heard calling. The lights flicker in the arena until they go out for a few seconds. When they come back on, there's now two men standing in the ring. Lex Luger and Sting. Sting attacks Luger as the crowd's going crazy. Commentators talk about how Sting's face paint and attire seem darker. He is wearing, like, black clothing. And he has, as you can see there in the picture, he has kind of the different um, face paint than usual. But they don't care, as they are going crazy for the fact that Sting is attacking Luger at the moment. Sting goes for the Stinger Splash on Luger in the corner. But Luger is able to quickly bail out of the ring and stumble his way as far away from the ring as he can. Sting stands there for a moment before pointing at an advertisement in the arena for Halloween Havoc. Luger looks scared out of his mind as the crowd is going crazy. So, kind of basically Sting kind of saying, hey, I want a shot at 
you, at, you, you know, against you at Halloween Havoc. It's not an official confirmed match yet, but it kind of you know seems like it's going to ha- lead to something. But Sting has a little bit of a darker look to him, not the full on like crow look that obviously we're all familiar with. Um, but he does have this darker look to him. He has the he has white uh, white with black face paint, and he's wearing like the trench coat and just kind of like darker attire. Um, again, it's not the the usual crow look like we're used to, but it's kind of showing this this kind of change. He you know he's he's clearly mentally hurt or whatever, uh, mentally hurt or disturbed by what Luger did to him. So he's kind of shown this little bit of a darker side. We'll have to see how that plays out. But this gets 74. Lost heat for the storyline because I tried rating Luger on something again. <laughs> whatever. I just needed, I need to get through this storyline so I can uh, move both men on to different things. Um, which sucks because I, you know, in in theory or on paper, it's, it's a great storyline. Um, it just... Say, uh, rating wise it's just not translating to uh to really great ratings unfortunately after that barry windham is seen leaving Ronnie piper's office when dustin rose approaches him rhodes asks him about uh, what he was talking to piper about and windham says that next that he wants a piece of horse the horseman for what happened last week i'm stumbling over my words right now however since the horsemen aren't here tonight he's gotten the two of them a match against marcus bagwell and chris benoit next week on nitro Rhodes looks glad, saying he wanted a piece of them after that attack. He goes to walk off, but Wyndham stops him. Wyndham says that wasn't the only thing he asked for. At Halloween Havoc, it will be Barry Wyndham defending the United States Championship against Dustin Rhodes. Rhodes starts to speak, but Wyndham says that he needs this to happen. However, for now, they focus on next week. So, we have an official next week on Nitro. It will be Barry Wyndham and Dustin Rhodes taking on two members of the Horsemen, Chris Benoit and Marcus Bagwell. And on top of that, we have our United States Championship matchup for Halloween Havoc. It is going to be Barry Windham defending the title against Dustin Rhodes. Um, we're going to have to see what Windham needs mean or uh, means by saying that he needs this to happen. But there you go. 94 rated segment. Really good stuff there. And then we head into a Cactus Jack promo, which gets a 99 rating, where he talks about the New World Order's effect here in World Championship Wrestling recently. He also talks about the lengths he's gone to in the past to stop people and how he's willing to go even beyond those to stop the NWO. A Halloween Havoc, Paul Levesque is going to find himself in a situation he doesn't want to be in. Surrounded by weapons, caught in a fight, and facing the psychopath known as Cactus Jack. He hopes Levesque Light enjoys hospital food because when Jack is done with him, that's all he'll be eating for many weeks to come. So Cactus Jack clearly ready to unleash the bit more psycho side of him and, uh, not just get the victory, not just try to go for the victory at Halloween Havoc, but to actually hurt and potentially even maim Paul of X. We'll have to see how that plays out with their street fight at the pay per view. That leads into our main event of the evening, which gets a 92 rating. My God! <laughs> well, then, I think we have. It might not be the best match we've had, but I think it is definitely in the top five. Although it might be our best match, I, I'll have to check afterwards. I think maybe we, I think maybe Rick Martel and Ric Flair were a, or yeah, Rick Martel and Ric Flair were, were a ninety-four. I think they might have had a ninety-four. So it might be our second best match, but still, my God, a ninety-two rated matchup. Is it about that had superb wrestling, great heat? Vader and Bam Bam went to a double disqualification with Randy Savage and Steven Regal. All four men could not follow the referee's rules, could not stop fighting with each other, could not stop trying to do whatever it took to beat the hell out of each other. And eventually the whole match gets thrown out. 92 rating. Savage with a 95. Steven Regal with a 93, which is huge. Uh, Bigelow with an 81. Vader with an 80. Lack of psychology, but you know what? I'll take it. A lot of great stuff here. Bigelow has a gimmick that's getting stale, so I'm going to have to tweak his gimmick a little bit. But nevertheless, a 92-rated main event here on Nitro. After the match, the four men in the main event continue fighting all over the ring and ringside area, which ends up leading to Vader connecting with a power bomb and a Vader bomb on Randy Savage. Vader then grabs the WCW World's Heavyweight Championship and lifts it up in the air. 
a foot on the chest of Randy Savage as Nitro comes to an end. So the heels get the advantage heading into Halloween Havoc, although they, there's still one more Nitro to go. But my God, was that a strong main event. The rating for Nitro itself is a 93. Let's go. There was a lot of great segments on this show for sure. The Horseman segment was a 99. The NWO video was an 88. The Savage Regal interview and the Paige Guerrero segment was hunt was two back-to-back 100s. A 99 rated Cactus promo and of course that main event of a 92. Gotta love it. Gotta love as WCW continues to roll with big time uh, matches and big time shows for sure. We're going to have to see how we stack up against Raw this week. Obviously got to imagine that we're going to be blowing them out of the waters when it comes to viewership as we usually do. But big stuff there as we have scheduled for next week. Um, only one match got announced for next week, but it's pr- still a pretty significant one, as it will be the United States champion Barry Windham and his number one contender for the title at Halloween Havoc, Dustin Rhodes, teaming up to take on the newest member of the Four Horsemen, Marcus Bagwell and Chris Benoit. We'll have to see how that plays out. We'll have to see how Luger and Sting um, play out, and so much more for sure. Our ratings for the week, as usual, absolutely destroying them. Just under 5.9 million viewers. Good for fifth on the night. We even beat Walker, Texas Rangers, so there you go. <laughs> Nitro was better than Chuck Norris on one night. <laughs> um, Raw had a 78 rating with 2.5 million viewers. They had a weird main event. Um, they're still set up where they tape the Tuesday before. So they're still set up as a tape show. And when I saw the show pop up, heading, getting ready to prepare for this video, I was really confused because this main event is something else. Uh, Diesel and Terry Gordy defeat Shawn Michaels and the Warrior. I don't know how the hell Terry Gordy got involved in the main event of Raw, but sure, Terry Gordy is involved in the main event of Raw. Terry Gordy, the 35-year-old who is exclusively written to the WWF, and, uh, you know, um, he's apparently a top star there in the WWF right now, despite the fact that he had a 57 performance. So there's that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is this is all certainly a show for sure. But... Once again, the big victory for WCW. As we head into Halloween Havoc, we are just on a roll right now. Absolutely killing it. As you see here in our top 100 rankings, uh, the top five shows of all time have been Nitros from the last few weeks here, including all episodes of Nitro from this month so far being in the top five. So that's huge. Top five matches, or top 100 matches, that is. So, Rick Fuller and Rick Martell were, was a 94. So, the, this main event that we just had is our second best match of all time, which is absolutely huge. It's even better than the Rick Flair and Randy Savage match from last year's Halloween Havoc, which is crazy to see. So, there you go. A really great uh, matchup there. Um, yeah, can't really uh, can't really say much else there. It's it, We're just... Absolutely killing it right now. Great stuff all around. Looking forward to Halloween Havoc, which will happen next weekend. Um, No, sorry, not next weekend, the following weekend. Um, And uh, we'll kind of go from there. So thank you for watching. Definitely appreciate it. And we will catch you guys all next week for another episode of Nitro.